at the end of the day, it's about ugly building. Uh, it's a 1970s building. Yeah. It's above a couple of shops and you've put in comparables of flats and things, but these will always sell to a disc at a discount to those mm. because it's an undes more mm. undesirable building. If it's brand new, it would have balconies, it would look better, energy efficiency, all this sort of stuff. So have you taken a, into account that these will go for a discount? So what have you brought today then for the Angels? So I'm going to be a little bit cheeky because I've got a property, which is part of the business that we own that we're looking for investment in, but also the business itself. We're hoping ah. to grow and expand it. Okay. I'm pretty certain some of those Angels have got a good opportunity for them, but would be a massive opportunity for us as well. Okay, really interesting. So tell us then about the deal firstly that you've brought. Yeah, so the deal itself is in Guildford yep. in Southeast. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an existing building that we actually already own yep. and that we're going to be converting uh, into 13 apartments. And that's a mix of 11 one beds and two two beds. Uh, we've already got everything on board, main contractor and everything. And we're looking to commence that next month. Tell us about the deal that you brought to us today, please. So our proposition is called Community Centred Flexible Living, and it's a new category of real estate that we think over the next 10 to 15 years will be the staple. But it's all about creating live, work and play experiences, as I mentioned before. We repurpose, our mission is about repurposing how people live, work and play. And the whole point was today living in modern day society it's tough right you only need to switch on a tap put on a light you feel the pain and, and that pain is in every part whether it's social if it's economic it's the environment and so we went to have a look at a, a model that not just creates a place to live but looks a little bit more holistically at living this lifestyle orientated living and so to do that we we created this live work and play and you might see in the pack uh, there's a model in there and it's just looking at mixed use, mixed tenure, so bringing the best of commercial and the best of residential to support and create value for the, for the resident. So you create your live spaces in the same space, which is mixed tenure, social, right through to home ownership. Oh, can... Well, stop me there. Let yeah. me stop you there. So you're mixing social housing with private ownership. Yep. In blocks of flats. In flats and homes, correct. But that was all lovely words, but isn't that just called co-living? So co-living is one of the tenures within our home ownership uh, and within our well, tenure I don't want to burst your bubble here, Alex, but in my experience, which is relatively large, social housing tenants, housing association tenants, some which are brilliant, by the way, I'm not suggesting they're not, and private ownership doesn't really mix on the whole. Now you might tell me how you're going to blast me out the water here, Alex, and tell me how you're going to change that. But at the end of the day, it's a very difficult mix. If, if the block gets a reputation, unfortunately, and it's not the, not the fault of the homeowner, you know, lending institutions won't have the same big heart you have. We've just avoided by the skin of our teeth, a house closure on a 42 unit block because of one tenant. Wow. The police were around every day for a week because of the way he behaved. But that could happen, nothing to, could, someone, yeah. that yeah, could happen could. to someone who owned it, to be Correct. fair, Nicholas. It, it could, but um, it's much more likely to happen in this sort of situation when you're putting in the social housing element. Are you proposing a complete mixed bag of tenure in this particular building? Social no. housing, um, working spaces and rental spaces, all in that building? This one here we bought uh, last year. Yep. And so we acquired it. It came with the commercial tenant in situ, yep. as well as office space. And, and uh, there was a leisure, it was hot yoga. It was horrendous. Don't know why anyone would like to do hot yoga. Yoga by itself is tough. Someone might <laughs> suggest that. You do it in bowls <laughs> and you'll get very hot. Oof. But it was hot yoga and office space. Yep. So we took it over with the thought process of creating additional housing and making it a bigger complex as well as the, the mixed How many square foot use. is that space? So there's 17,000 square feet in total. Yeah. And how much was it originally? How so many we square bought, feet so <coughs> was it originally? No, it's 17,000 in total. That's so you're not, you're, not adding, you're not adding to it? No. Okay. So we did go in for additional planning, mm -hmm. uh, a long story of lot with Guildford Keep Planning short, Authority. Yeah. But essentially they said, we'll give you 25, but you've got to reapply and do your whole planning process again. Why have you only managed to get 13 apartments under the various PDs? Under, on a 17,000 square foot building? Ah, uh, because you've got the commercial space in there, which is... Oh, right okay, now. so how much... So it includes the, the commercial floors? space? Yeah. So we own the whole piece the right whole now thing. within the JV. So you're the proud, you're the proud 
uh, one of that lovely owner ugly duckland building of that's right there you can see the ground floor tenants so who, who's going to have all the shops and everything else so the, the jv holder the jv yeah. will hold that so what you're saying is you're sending it to an spv the upstairs yeah which is how what's the net square feet for upstairs so nine thousand just under nine, nine thousand that makes more sense okay, okay. nine thousand square feet upstairs in that nine thousand square foot of upper floors you're looking at getting service office space and a whole bunch of apartments. No, no, no so just flats. Just, just, just flats. flats. This just is the bit, because we could one. only get 13 apartments here. We want to yeah. go for yeah. a very simple buy, develop, sell strategy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Straightforward. So I assume the 350 that's referred to here, is that the existing JV partner or is that you? The way we do our equity shares is obviously, well, the equity piece is to, to do as a profit share. 870,000 is the total equity commitment. We already have investors through the JV because that's naturally coming to an end. They want to continue the journey which they first came on. And I love to honor that because investors are so important as part of the journey. So I said to those guys, yes, we'd love to have you on. Please come through. So that 350,000 pounds is existing investors. So that's the profit they're making out of the existing it's their, deal. It's their original plus the, a, a bit profit. of the profit they made yeah, from the back end. Of that 350, from from investors is any of that yours personally or any of your business partners personally yeah so i mean we've put a lot of costs to get that building yep. with planning it's fully enabled so all of the strip out costs are done in place um, we've spent all on the professional fees obviously getting planning and, and to where it is right now we'll inject some more capital into that of about another 75k um, which will be running for day one cost vat etc okay so, so of the of the 870, or tell me if it's included in that or not, how much are you personally invested? And when I say personally, I mean your company, how much of that is actually yours? So we'll put an additional layer of about 75,000 on in top there. of the 870. But we've already spent the capital yeah. previously. How much have you spent so far yourself on getting planning and everything else? The total cost. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a certain feel yeah, of the skin in the game. Yes, yeah, so it's about well over a quarter of a million pounds. To get to this and point. I think that's really important that you know people look at these developments and think oh well it's this it's that we'll just get going no there's a lot of costs <laughs> involved before you actually you know before the, the contractor turns up on day one you know there's a lot of costs involved including a lot of interest of course and uh, and planning fees and so on a couple of things that I'm a little bit nervous about when you look at a, a development it doesn't matter you know what area it's in I always if it's a commercial ground floor I always want to know what the tenants are like on the ground floor because that tells me what sort of area it's in within the town and mm -hmm. I know it's a good area here I know it's a nice area with all due respect if you look at the tenants on the ground floor and we we'll won't probably mention them they are rangible. not high-end not high-end affordable affordable and that and that concerns me because that tells me something about the area I know it's a nice area but within that area there's always areas which aren't so good and having those tenants there uh, in the commercial side, the first thing I ask when I look at any development, what are the shops around it like? North Street, if you, I'm not sure if you're aware of North Street in Guildford, no. it's right next to the main high street, which yeah. is very old. It's very well to do in Guildford. Yeah. It's just about to start a 15 to 20 million pound redevelopment, okay. which will pedestrianise the whole site. North Street, not only going through that redevelopment piece, but we've just had some great names coming in as well. Itsu being the one that's just come in opposite. They've took a very large space. So this street is now all going to be for redevelopment. It's on the way up is what you're And saying. it's on the way up. Now okay. those, those tenants, although yes, could be affordable in nature, they do represent essential daily spend, mm. which will always be needed in this day and age, especially coming forward. It doesn't matter what city you live in. No, I totally understand that, but you're trying to sell those flats to people. The first thing they do is look on the ground floor who's, and who's occupying those who's occupying those shops. It doesn't give it a good it doesn't give it a good feel. Are you struggling to find your next commercial to residential conversion project? Well, over the next two years, virtually every UK bank branch will close. Banks are fabulous buildings in prime locations and thanks to permitted development rights, they're really easy to convert to alternative uses under a light touch planning regime. My team have put together a list of over 500 UK bank branches which are poised for imminent closure. And for a limited period only, you can download this list absolutely free. 
your next commercial property project is on this list. So download it now and enjoy the rest of the video. At the end of the day, it's about ugly building. Uh, it's a 1970s building. Yeah. It's above a couple of shops and you've put in comparables of flats and things, but these will always sell to a disc at a discount to those mm. because it's an undes more mm. undesirable building. If it's brand new, it would have balconies, it'd look better, energy efficiency, all this sort of stuff. So have you taken a, into account that these will go for a discount to the GDVs of those, those newer buildings? Yeah, 100%. And, and I think the key is here that we're turning the ugly duck cuddling into a beautiful swan because we have to do quite a lot of external facade treatment. So yeah. we'll bring in Juliet yeah. balconies, we'll take those infills in place, okay. we'll put in brick slip pieces, there's relief there that we need to do. To be honest, we have had a full RICS report done by bank and they came in, so the base case you see is the base case given by their RICS. Mm. The I don't take a lot of, uh, I understand what but you're saying, a rent valuation. From I have a my, bank I as have well, my right? own valuations, Alex, like the whole, like the fibers here, and it doesn't always agree with it. It's sometimes more than a red book, it might be less, but I hear what you're saying. It's a base, it's a base. It's a base case. Yeah. And we've, we've yeah. also then worked with a lot of agents and I mean, yeah. we've had this under control for a, 18 months yeah. to 20 months, yeah, okay. so we no, that's know fair enough. really okay. well what's going yeah. on in that area. Nicholas, sorry. So, so the just to carry on with the comparables, what are what's the pound per square foot that you're using and your comparables? 638. 638. Did you say that you had approval to change the facade? Yes. So it's not going to look like that? No, 100%. Right. Okay. Even if I, with the best developer hat in the world, I don't think anyone would want to buy a Well, a you'd be surprised. Or, there are a lot of developments that look like that yeah, terrible. And, and they're very difficult to finance and yeah. sell. No, so we, we're, we're changing that. There is a couple of pictures on yeah. the, yeah. of what the facade yeah. really is. No, it's a, very like. good, it's a very good pack. Our profit return model, we do what's called a supported floor and an unlimited ceiling. Yes. And the idea is there is to pr provide protection to the investor in case of development problems. So, you know, overrun on time, GDV decrease or build cost increase. Essentially, if the profit was to reduce up to 30%, we will still guarantee that 26% base case return. And that is because essentially we'll pay that out of our profits. So what happens if there's got, no profits? If there's no profits, then we, we both don't, we share zero. So the support doesn't guarantee a, a return per se? See the support, the way Preference I would, returns, it, it, It's a preferential mm. return system. And the way is it, Consider it as additional contingency. We've got 7.5% on here, which is £114,000 of contingency. That's developer's contingency. We're already signing in a, 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 a design and build contract with the, with the contractor, the main contractor. So you've got a fixed, sum, a fixed price lump sum. So there's part of that risk removed. If they stick to it, which a lot of people aren't doing at the moment. And then we've got 7.5% on top, which is one hundred and fourteen grand. And then what we're saying is with this supported floor, that's another £225,000. So if the, the things went really bad for whatever reason and we lost profit to the tune of 225, you guys will still have your 26% protected. So it's essentially you've got, what's that? £341,000. But the 26% is over how long? It's annualised. And for clarity, when you say annualised, what exactly do you mean? So 26% will be, so if, let's say we then went to 13 months, 14 months, it would still be 26% that you would make per annum. So if it's in it for two years, I get 26% times two? Correct. Okay, thank you. But you won't be able to pay that. <laughs> but it won't take two years. I've heard that one before as well. I've said that, <laughs> to, my, I've said that to myself before. <laughs> and guess what? I was wrong. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so I got promised one month, to, six I, I, months. You've had lots of promises, I expect, over the years. <laughs> <laughs> expect. Four but, years but, on. But what I would okay. say is that we could pay that, and the reason being is that it's one hundred eighty-nine thousand pounds would be the return to equity based on the current it, and the current amount, yeah. total amount. The supported floor is two hundred twenty-five. So essentially, we we have that coverage for you guys. So okay. sits within. All right. So we could do two years. I'm no. really hoping it doesn't. No, of course not. Of course, of course, we all want to be positive. <laughs> we all want to. We all want to think, but I think four months to to finish off or, or, or to or, you know to sell the flats when they're done. And I know you'll say you'll start the sales now, but well, we already have the, yeah. right in place right now. We are in discussions on a pre-sale for everything. Uh, so what? you've sold three already, but you're 
that's the other 10 so the, or yeah the so the three the three there we as a business yeah. we w would like to purchase that because that represents opportunity for us in guildford yes however we did we were made an approach to say would you consider selling everything oh right on day one so obviously on practical completion they would purchase okay but that is and, no. and that is by no means done. No, so no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. just trying to so give as much one, information. I've got one last, if that's okay, I've got one last question. What do you think the property market's going to do over the next 12 months and how will it affect this deal? Crystal ball. I, I know what I think. I want to know what you think. Yeah, so I think we will see a cooling. I, I don't disagree in that. I think what is going to happen is London is still going to remain very popular. Surrey, as you see, is cooling down and people want to go back into London and they want spaces to be getting into London. This is 39 minutes to Waterloo direct. Yeah. This is a, and the property price is 14, 50% cheaper. So what are you saying? So up I still see- Up or down or staying the same? I still think this will stay the same, if okay. not increase us slightly. Because, okay. and the reason being is it's a small quantum city centre based with a great opportunity to get into London. Okay. And the price-ish per flat? The range from 220 up to about 430 is the highest, I believe. Mm. I think you've really well presented, great pack, clearly what you're doing. You, you seem to have a good board of directors. Um, if I was a hands-off investor, um, I'd like to talk to you more. Um, I'm not, I'm a developer like yourself. Um, I want to add value. Um, I want to be hands-on, I want to get stuck in. Um, I think there's some improvements I could make on the site with you, but there's not enough for me to add to warrant me being in, to be quite frankly, for what I'd want. So it's not one for me, but you know, wish you all the best with it. You're, you're that well progressed with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, True. that Maturity. it's kind of done already. Mm. Um, and you just need the money, which you can probably find anyway. Um, and my, I can probably get a better return on my money than this is offering in reality. Um, so I don't think it's for me, not that, not that that's it's not for anyone else. I think it's, it's a decent hands off investment, like Nick said, but um, not necessarily for me. Although we're sitting in armchairs, we're not armchair <laughs> investors. So uh, I think I, I just echo the, the, the comments. So it's, a, it's an interesting armchair investor deal, but that's not me. Mm -hmm. I mean, a few years ago, this would have been right up my, right up my alley. It's more or less how I started um, kind of professionally investing um, and using the, these type of examples to get to know developers and then go on and invest with them directly. My strategy has kind of moved, I've moved away from that now, to be honest, because of some fairly unpleasant experiences. And I love, I love like your ambition. I love the things mm. you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but the risk for the return is just, is not quite there for me. And like I say, being in the same level as, as other investors, I've moved on a little bit from that, but I wish you well. I, I like this. It's the sort of thing we do all the time. And it'd be quite nice not to have to do it, but actually watch someone else doing it. Um, can I add any real value to what you're doing? <laughs> no, but uh, unlike these other guys, I'm not a control freak. You know, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm very happy to uh, take a back seat and turn up once a month and have a nice coffee with you. Have a look around oh, and, and for you to confirm mm -hmm. it's on schedule, on time. It's going to be done with, with, you know, all the rest of it as it should be. I think his nose grow a little bit there. I, I need security. For the money, I, I I'm not prepared with other investors to just put the money in the same as them. Now I understand that might upset everyone. I I, I can't help that. My offer would be I uh, will put in um, three hundred thousand pro rata to the offering. Okay, so we you would do three hundred out of the five twenty. Yeah, but I want a second charge on it. I, th I can't say, and I will have no, a look. I'll go I, I and think have a it's look. A it's a conversation. Yeah, not definitely. Conservation. Conversation for afterwards, probably. Yeah, but 100%. I think if that helps, um, I'd go to 300. Don't ask me to go to 305 because the answer is no. Okay. Oh, much appreciate. I'd love to have the conversations. Yeah, of course, for your okay. partners. I appreciate that. But if we can do something, um, that, that'd that be great. And I think it's an exciting, exciting project. And like you said, you've got others. So thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much. Not at all. Much and uh, let's, um, let's speak afterwards and see yeah. what we can do. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Was it good news, bad news? How did you get on? A mixed reception. Obviously, I was trying to push the boat a little bit and ask them to support the business as well as the deal. Yeah. Um, we didn't quite get 
the support and the business, but we did get some interest from John at the end uh, about potentially partially investing in the deal. Okay, so not a 100% offer, but more of like a, a conditional offer. I'd say offer. like 70, 75%. Okay, there. okay. And what's that basis on? Have you got to have a chat yeah, and so continue? Yeah, so I think we're going to have a, another conversation. Yeah. There's a couple of things on security he wants to look at um, to make sure his money is safe. So hopefully we can uh, resolve something on that. The scheme's pretty straightforward. It's pretty quick. My concern is getting out of deals quickly at the moment. I don't want to be in for years. Mm -hmm. I've got some of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I don't want to put too much in, but if I can have a second charge on it, and I think that's important, isn't it, um, Helen? Don't you think with so many investors just throwing money at people without any security? And we've, and we've seen how some of those things end. People really have to think about it in the worst case scenario. Absolutely. What, what protections are in place to recover that money? I talk about it all the time, security. You know, and I've got a joint venture fund and it fits into my joint venture fund in a way uh, very well. Um, and they know what they're doing. And I think that's quite important. Um, so I'm, you know, they may not be able to do it. And the other investors might say no, if they do, so be it. But I just me, thought it was worth an, an offer anyway. We, we, didn't, we didn't talk about it too much, John, but the history of this with the, with the current JV sort of wrapping up and it moving to different stages, it all felt a bit messy to me. I agree, and I, didn't, I agree. didn't really drill but into I, that I, very I don't, much. I don't really care because, so. I, because they're paying a certain price for it. Mm. Whatever the price is they're paying for it, it stacks up on paper and, um, you know, I'm putting £300,000 in for a return of... You know, I think the fact you've put them. yourself ahead of the other investors on a, an existing asset that's worth money is, yeah. is you know, the smart thing. That's the smart, sensible thing yeah, to do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll see, won't we? See what he says. See what his investors yeah. say. Good luck. On to the next. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now. And at Baker Street Property Meet, we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.